Hi guys, so I'm going to be going over your Unit 5 study guide for your test that is tomorrow. Um, so question one says, identify the type of association for the data, create your own graph on a separate sheet of paper. So if you notice, our years are going up by ones, and then the emissions in dollars are increasing as well. So we know that this is a positive it's going to be a positive slope or a positive line, so it's going to be a line that is increasing. And when we identify the type of associations, if you guys look at the different answer choices, uh, we have a linear association, so that means that it's going to be somewhat close to a straight line. Nonlinear association which means that it's not going to look like a line. Um, negative is talking about um, if it's the direction that it's going. So we already know that it's going to be a positive slope since our uh, emission dollars are increasing. So we know for sure that it's not going to be the negative ones. Uh, no association means that we don't know if it's going up or down. Uh, the data points are just kind of spread everywhere, which we know that it's for sure going to be positive. So it can't be no association so we just need to figure out if it's nonlinear or linear so we told you guys to create this graph on a separate sheet of paper if you could or if you notice all of these are pretty close to each other so if I were to figure out the difference between them if I were to go from uh, 508 to 539 I'm increasing by 31 cents and then same thing if I were to go from $5.39 to $5.66, I'm increasing by $0.27. Cents. And if you notice, all of these increases are going to be fairly close to each other. So if, does this mean that it's going to be linear or nonlinear? Well, if they're all fairly close to each other, then that means that it's going to be linear. So this answer should be a positive linear association. And if you were to try and graph it, you're more than welcome to do so. But when you do try to graph it, you're going to notice that all of your points are going to be fairly close to each other. So our graph is going to look something like this. Okay. All right, question number two, determine if the scatter plot is a better representation of cluster or outlier. So outlier is when we have a graph and there's a bunch of points in a line-ish, and then there's one or more outliers that are not close to our line. So if you look here, there's really no outliers. They're all bunched up in different areas. So which one would you guys think that this is? Hopefully you guys said cluster because they are all clustered together in these little circles. There's no obvious outlier in the graph like it was over here in my example. So that's why this one's cluster. Alright, so moving on to the next question. Um, determine if this scatter plot is a better representation of cluster or outlier. Well, I kind of just talked about it in the last problem. Um, so notice how all of our points, our order pairs, are following somewhat of this line. However, there's one point over here off to the side, and that is what we call an outlier. So this graph better represents an outlier. All right, next question, using the graph below, order the statements one through three to match the graph. So number one, Mary returned to her house. So this y-axis is talking about distance from home. So she's returning to her house. That means that she was somewhere and then ended up at home. So home would re represent the x-axis down here at the bottom. So that's going to represent the very last line over here. So if this was 1, 2, and 3, 3 is going to represent Mary returned to her house. Uh, Mary left her house to go to the mall, so she started at home and then left her home, so that should represent number one. 
And then the last one, Mary stayed at the mall to shop. Well, she stayed at the mall, then she's not traveling anywhere further from home. She's still at the mall, so that's why it's going to represent number two. So Mary started at home, left her house to go to the mall. She stayed there and shopped, and then she returned home. All right. Moving on to the next question, describe a qualitative graph to represent placing a tray, a tray of water in the freezer to make ice cubes. Label the independent variable time and the dependent variable as temperature. So our independent variable is our x-axis and our dependent variable is our y-axis. So question one says, what's our x-axis? Well, the x-axis is the independent variable, which is time. So your answer here should be time. Uh, the dependent variable is representing the y-axis, which is our temperature. So answer two should be temperature. And then we just need to pick which statement describes the qualitative graph. So we are trying to place a tray of water in the freezer to make ice cubes. So first one, starting at zero degrees, the temperature will increase as time increases. After freezing, the temperature will decrease as the time increases. So they're saying starting at zero, if our dependent variable is talking about temperature and our time is the independent variable, they start at zero, they say that the temperature is gonna increase and after freezing, the temperature will decrease. So they're saying that the graph is gonna look something like this. So I don't think that's the correct one because our temperature, it shouldn't be increasing, it actually should be decreasing. Uh, next one, starting above zero degrees, the temperature will decrease as time increases and after freezing, the temperature will increase as the time increases. So they're saying, starting above zero degrees, the temperature will decrease. And after freezing, the temperature will increase as the time increases. So they're saying the graph is going to look something like this or maybe something like that as well. So I don't think that's it because we don't want our temperature to increase because then we don't have ice cubes anymore, right? So the last one says, starting above zero, uh, the temperature will decrease, and after freezing, the temperature will remain the same as the time increases, which I believe that one is correct, because when it hits freezing point, it's going to stay that temperature, and it will stay an ice cube. All right, um, next one. Uh, there are 195 male students and 126 female students in the 8th grade out of middle school. A survey showed that 110 males and 84 females ride the bus. Complete the table. All right. So we need to uh, insert in the information that they gave us into our table. So I'm going to create a new table because this kind of looks a little confusing based on the one that I have. All right, so this is bus, not bus, total. This is males, females, and total. All right, so they are saying that there are 195 male students and 126 female students in the eighth grade at a middle school. So since there are 195 total male students, since this row is talking about males, I need to insert 195 in for the total. And then since there are 126 female students in the females row, I need to enter the total of 126 female students. All right, then they show that 110 males ride the bus. So in my males row, 110 of them ride the bus. I'm gonna fill in 110 with my bus column. And then for the females, 84 ride the bus. So in my females column, there's 84 of them that ride the bus. We need to fill in the rest of them. 
So answer choice number two, which is this one, I could just take my total and subtract it from how many males ride the bus, and that's going to tell me how many of them do not ride the bus. So if I take 195 minus 110, that means that 85 of them do not ride the bus. I can do the same thing for the female, so I can take the total minus how many ride the bus, and that's going to tell me how many do not ride the bus, and that is 42 of them. And then now I can just fill in my totals. So I'm going to now look at my column, so how many students in all, male and female, ride my bus, or ride the bus. So that's 110 plus 84, and that gives me 194. I'll do the same thing for how many students do not ride the bus, male and female. So 85 plus 42 gives me 127. And then the total students for male and female are 195 plus 126, and we get that to be 321. So remember, you guys can pause the video at any time to fill in your answers. There should be closed captioning on as well if you guys need it, but I'm just going to go ahead and move on to the next question. All right, select which equation would represent the line of best fit. So the line of best fit, if you guys kind of look, may look something like this. Okay, it doesn't have to be exact, but these order pairs would be close to a line that looks something like that. So if I look at my first answer choice, 10x plus 100, well, the line of best fit, my y-intercept says it's going to start at 100, which in this case, that does not look like it's going to work. So I'm not going to pick that one. Um, not, or y equals 100x plus 10. Well, notice how my y-intercept is not going to go through 10. I have it starting at 0. So this means I should not have any y-intercept whatsoever. So I don't think it's the second one. And then y equals 100x or y equals 10x. Notice how my y-intercept is 0. So I do know that it's going to be one of these. But now I have to find the slope of my line. So on my line of best fit, let's say I pick 0, 0 as one of my points, as well as this point right here at 10, 100. So if I were to find the slope of that, rise over run, I go up 100 and over 10. So if I were to reduce that, 100 divided by 10 is going to give me a slope of 10. So my answer choice that I need is this last one, y equals 10x. All right, next one. The independent variable is time expressed in hours, and the dependent variable is the score of the final exam. Uh, they want us to answer some questions here, so write the equation of the line of best fit. So, if you notice, my y-intercept looks like it's at 52 or 51, but if you look at my answer choices, it's either 60, 0, or 50. So, obviously, I'm going to pick the one that it's closest to, which is 50. So, I know my y-intercept is 50, and now I just need to find my slope. So if I were to pick two points, uh, let's say I picked, I don't know, these two. So again, start with the point furthest to the left. I rise up 20 because I go from 50 to 70, so I rose 20. And then I ran, I am going by 1, so I ran 1, 2, 3, 4. So if my slope is 20 over 4, that reduces to 5. So my line of best fit equation should be y equals 5x plus 50. All right, uh, next one, describe what the slope represents. So here are some answer choices. Uh, how much your exam score increases with the time that you study. How much your exam score decreases with the time that you study. How much your time increases as your score gets higher or how much your time decreases as your score gets higher. 
So notice how we do have a positive slope, so we are increasing. So all of the answer choices that had our uh, score is decreasing is not correct because we know that our slope is increasing. We just need to figure out, is it the exam score increases with the time that we study or the time increases as our score gets higher? So we always say that the more that you study, so we're talking about our x-axis, if we had a slope of 5, this means that 5 is representing the score for each hour that you spend. So for every hour, your score should go up by 5, which means that the more that we spend time studying, the more that our exam score is going to increase. So, um, so it should be this first one here. So how much your exam score increases with the time that you study. This one is trying to just throwing me off a little bit because it doesn't even sound right. So how much your time increases as your score gets higher. Yeah, that does not make sense. So it is that one. Uh, answer choice four, describe the y-intercept. So our y-intercept is at 50. So it's the time they started studying, anticipate a score with no studying, or hours spent studying. So our hours spent studying on our graph is zero, and we are anticipating that that's where they're going to start at if they don't study. So the correct answer choice here should be the anticipated score with no studying. All right, and then question number five, predict the score on the final exam if a student spends six hours studying. Um, so you could either look at the graph here. So if they spent six hours, they're going to get maybe an 80 on it. Or you could plug it in uh, for x in our equation right here. So if I plugged in six for x, Five times six gives me 30, and then 30 plus 50 gives me that 80 again. So it should be an anticipated score of 80%. All right, and a couple more questions on the back. Um, solve the following equation. Um, so remember, we need to combine like terms first. So if I combine 7w and negative 10w, that gives me negative 3w. And now I just have a two-step equation to solve. So first step is to subtract 13 on both sides. I get negative 3w equals 24. And my last step is to divide by negative 3 on both sides to get w by itself. So 24 divided by negative 3 gives me negative 8. All right, next one. So notice how I have variables on both sides. So I need to get all variables on one side and all constants over on the other side. So let's say I move the 6m to the left. So the opposite of adding 6m is to subtract it. So I'm going to subtract 6m on both sides. So 9m minus 6m gives me 3m. I'm going to move it over here. Then I still have that plus 33 because I can only combine like terms together. So that's why the 6m did not go with the 33. And then I still have negative 21 on the right side. So now I just have a two-step equation. To get m by itself, I need to move this plus 33 to the other side. So the opposite of adding 33 is to subtract it. Those cancel. You're left with 3m equals negative 21 minus 33 gives me negative 54. And then my last step to get m by itself is to just divide by 3 on both sides. So negative 54 divided by 3 gives me negative 18. All right, next one. I do need to simplify this before I start doing anything else. So distributive property 
Remember, you're taking this outside number and multiplying it times everything on the inside. So 5 times 2y, 5 times 2 is 10, so this would be 10y. 5 times 6 is 30, so it would be plus 30. I'm going to do the same thing over here, so negative 4 times negative 5, and negative 4 times negative 2y. So negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20. And then negative 4 times a negative 2y would give me a positive 8y. And then everything else is just going to drop down. I don't know why this is so blurry. There we go. Okay. So notice how the left side is simplified, however the right side is not because I can combine like terms together. I can combine my 20 and my 3 because those are like terms. And I can also combine my 8y and my 3y. So 20 plus 3 gives me 23 and 8y plus 3y gives me 11y. So my new equation is going to be 10y plus 30 equals 23 plus 11y. All right, so after we simplified it down, we can now start moving our variable around to get it to be by itself. So just like we did up here, we had to get all variables on one side and all constants over on the other side. So let's say I move my 10y to the right side this time. So the opposite of adding 10y is to subtract it. I get 30 equals 23 plus a 1y. And then now this is just a one step equation. So my last step to get this y by itself is to subtract 23 on both sides. So 30 minus 23 gives me 7. And that should be my answer. All right. Uh, simplify the following expression. So remember, uh, if we have coefficients out front, we're just going to multiply them like normal. So 4 times 5 is 20. And when we're multiplying with exponents, if you have same base, all that you have to do is add your exponents together. So 5 plus 6 would give me 11. So that answer should be 20w to the 11th. All right, uh, same thing with this one, except we are dividing. So we do have coefficients out front. So if I were to take 51 divided by 17, I get a value of 3. And when we're dividing with exponents, if you have the same base, you can just subtract your exponents like normal. So 17 minus 8 would give me 9. So this answer should be 3x to the 9th. All right, and I believe that was it. So if you guys have any more questions, uh, rewatch the video or just send me an email and I'd be happy to help you. Thank you.